All right, guys, so today we're going to be talking about why women love men who are subtle and why being subtle is one of the most powerful ways to project power and to attract attention and to get inside a woman's mind. This strategy has been used throughout all of the ages with the most powerful men and women. And so this power is available to you if only you learn how to be more subtle. So let's talk about how just like anything. We're having 50% off all of our courses this month only using the, using the coupon code MINDFUL. Um, you could purchase my recent courses, um, Emotional Mastery and the Charisma Blueprint, which pretty much exp the title explains what that is, right? Um, using the coupon code 50% off and you can get 20% off working with me one-on-one, -on -one, okay? So look, first and first, subtlety is the ultimate form of power. If anybody who has, who is secure in themselves, they're going to be subtle. Anytime somebody is insecure, they're going to be obvious. For example, look at white wealth, right? Wealthy people used to be very, um, when there wasn't a middle class, wealthy people used to be more extravagant, more fancy. In fact, they used to have colors specifically for wealthy people, which was purple, a very vivid and very strong color and hard to get. But nowadays, there's something called subtle wealth. And why is that? Well, because poor people have learned to fake being wealthy, okay? And because of that, rich people had to find a way to differentiate themselves. And so they started doing something called subtle wealth, where they buy expensive things that look cheap. Like a, like a white t-shirt, there's like a normal white t-shirt, but in reality, that white t-shirt is like $200. So subtlety, whenever you have it, you're gonna be subtle, right? Whenever you have high self-esteem, you're going to be subtle. Whenever you don't have it, you're going to be obvious. You're going to yell. Just like the fool is the one that yells the loudest. The wisest ones is the ones that yells the least. For example, even in the mafia, right? Castellano was one of the most powerful ma maf mafiosos ever. But what was his, his, main, his main thing? Was subtlety. Nobody knew about him. As opposed to guys like Scarface. As opposed to guys, to a bunch of different gangsters. The, the loudest ones, the more, the ones that were the loudest were the ones that couldn't keep the power for long enough. So, it's not just that. The best basketball players, when you notice a basketball player, the best ones, their moves are subtle, right? Where they'll be able to get past their man and, you're, and you ask yourself, how, how is he able to get past them? He's not even doing anything. Well, I watched Larry Bird, one of my favorite basketball, my favorite basketball player ever. He was able to drop people, like get people fall to the ground. He was able to do that with just a jab step, and people would just fall. <laughs> like, like he'll go like that, and people would just fall to the ground. And you would ask yourself, how is he doing that? Well, because he is so skilled that it turned subtle. When you meditate and you become aware of your breath, what they tell you in the meditation retreats is that. You want to be aware of the subtleness. The more subtle sensations you become aware of, the deeper in the, in the meditative state you are. You get so subtle to the point where you get, you re, you're able to sense the, at, 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 um, the vibration at an atomic level, where you're able to sense the atoms in your nose vibrating. And, and so the more subtle sensations you notice, like maybe you notice this part vibrates more than this part, the deeper in the state of meditation that you are. So, so as we can see, subtleness is, is a part of nature and is a part of some, and, and is always a reflection of something that's real, deep rooted and powerful, right? So even warriors, the best warriors have an economy of motion. They don't just move around like this. They have an economy of motion, right? Um, subtlety is the ultimate is the ultimate show of restraint and power at the end of the day, right? So not that we got that out the way um, to tell you guys that subtlety is really the the pinnacle of 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 outer confidence. Subtlety is the pinnacle of skills. Subtlety is the pinnacle of of wealth. Subtlety is the pinnacle of of skills of 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 any type of social form of communication, right? Because you'll notice that the most insecure person moves the most, the most insecure person talks the fastest and speaks the loudest. But if you watch it, like if you watch an anime, you'll notice that you could tell who's, who's gonna win the fight by who is doing more. So if the if the if the guy's is fighting like this versus a guy that's like ah, ah, in, in anime, it means that the guy who's ah 
is is the guy that's, who's going to get his ass kicked. Being subtle is often considered the ultimate form of confidence and power. It is a concept that extends beyond material wealth and can be observed in various aspects of life, including personal attributes, achievements, and even finances. Yeah, people who are really successful, you'll notice that if they're really confident, they're subtle about their success. Like I always say, the most powerful person in the group are always subtle about that reality. Wealthy individuals who possess the notion of subtle wealth understand the value of understatement and elegance. Instead of flaunting their money through extravagant displays, they choose to convey their status more discreetly. Heck, allowing even, even when you're like, even women, for example, I, like, I always, honestly, I always get fascinated. Like, there are some women who, I don't know why, I just find them more attractive. Like, when, when they're subtle about their beauty, right? Too much makeup is, says insecurity. But when you're subtle about the makeup, it says confidence, right? Or even women who have amazing bodies. They're subtle about them, the, about the heavies, right? Well, they'll try their best to hide how big they are, but you sort of can see that they are. And so it, it plays with your imagination a little bit more, right? Like, or even people who f don't flaunt how good looking they are online, and then you meet them in person, they're better looking in person, right? Being subtle, man, it's just, it just blows my mind it's about subtlety. It really is. It really does. It's, it's, it's almost like it's the whisper of the powerful it's the whisper of the beautiful it's the whisper of depth subtlety knowing their actions and choices to speak for themselves their status more dis they choose to convey their status more discreetly allowing their actions and choices to speak for themselves confident individuals also embody this subtlety they don't feel the need to broadcast their accomplishments or self-assurance to the world instead they exude a quiet confidence that radiates from within. But also that's a problem because the most powerful people aren't really the ones in the public light. And that's why the powerful people are hard to pinpoint because they're subtle. The scapegoats, the, the public representative, the people who are being controlled are usually the loud ones. They are comfortable in their own skin and do not seek validation or attention from others. This understated confidence is magnetic and commands respect from those around them. Subtlety can be seen as a universal language of something greater hiding underneath. It implies a depth of character and a level of self-assuredness that transcends external appearances. Mm -hmm. When yes. someone possesses subtle power, they hold a quiet strength and grace that captivates others. They understand that true power lies in restraint and wisdom, rather than in loud declarations or ostentatious displays. Moreover, subtlety allows one to maintain an air of mystery and intrigue. It sparks curiosity and invites others to look deeper, mm -hmm. uncovering layers of complexity and hidden depths. Well, isn't that, like, magicians will tell you that the old magic is all about the subtle. Magic is all about, well, not just all about subtlety, but also misdirection. But at the core of it, if you're not subtle with your moves, with your tricks, you're going to be found out. It is a form of communication that speaks volumes without uttering a word. Subtle individuals possess a refined sense of self-awareness and emotional intelligence, enhancing their ability to navigate social situations with grace and ease. In a world that often emphasizes overt displays of wealth, confidence, and power, hip hop embracing subtlety sets individuals apart. Yep. Think about it. Who are the ones that get like in the hip hop industries? Who are the ones that get played and get abused? The loud ones. And who are the ones that really are abusing their power? The quiet ones. It showcases a level of sophistication, and sophistication that cannot be replicated through With flamboyance. flamboyance. Exactly. Ultimately. Ultimately, being subtle is a powerful statement in itself. As it demonstrates, as it demonstrates an, inner an inner strength and an understanding of the deeper nuances of life. So let's talk about different areas to be subtle. 
and and how it could benefit you right One is how you show them that you like someone right um rather than confessing your love like it's a like it's a disney movie right don't confess your love to someone show them that you like them through your actions and behavior even if you even if you're getting to know them in school and stuff like that it's less it's less creepy when they realize that you like them randomly rather than you, do, you doing something specifically that says i like you well, the studies show that it's, it's teachers who give the students the answer perform less than teachers who don't give students the answer. And that performing less in this occasion is, in my opinion, is people who slowly realize that somebody likes you. In my opinion, they end up liking you for a longer period of time than people who you have your little Disney confession to. Um, nothing wrong with confessions. I just think it's... It's, there's more fun ways to tell people that they like you. Like you could just write letters to them anonymously and let them slowly over time realize it, that it's you through a little hint, right? That's a much better way to show somebody that you like them through giving them a puzzle for them to solve rather than just say, oh my God, I like you. Here's my dick. Like the fuck? Like, <laughs> like, like what's, you know, but people have lost the art of, the, of sophistication. Even, even back, even painters back then, like Michelangelo never showed the Sistine Chapel until it was complete. He never did. Nowadays, we as artists, we want to show everything quickly. We don't know the art of, of subtlety and how, and how that brings power. Connecting the dots and realizing something through observing the details has a profound effect on the mind because it engages our cognitive processes, emotions and intuition in a much deeper way compared to simply receiving straightforward answers. This process often leads to an aha moment where the pieces of information come together to form a coherent understanding. Mm -hmm. For example, realizing that someone likes you through connecting the dots has a deeper impact than being directly told. When you observe their behavior, actions, and words over time, you start noticing patterns, subtle gestures, and changes in their demeanor. These are details which might seem insignificant individually gradually accumulate into a larger picture. As you connect these dots, a realization emerges, triggering a mix of emotions like excitement, anticipation, and even vulnerability. Yeah, that the realization is the key. Is it's almost like but but it's just crazy, honestly. Even as I'm making this video, it's kinda like it's kinda blowing my mind. This emotional roller coaster intensifies the impact of the revelation and creates a lasting impression. Mm -hmm. The process of allowing your unconscious mind to contribute to the aha moment adds another layer of depth. Our unconscious mind constantly processes information and picks up on subtle signals that our conscious mind might overlook. By giving yourself the space and time to reflect and observe, you tap into this vast pool of unconscious knowledge. When the connections finally click, it feels like a sudden breakthrough, as if the answer was hidden within you all along. This penetration into the depths of your mind brings about clarity, insight, and understanding. And so you give, this is what happens to them when you do this. When you subtly give them little, um, um, what's that thing? Um, Easter egg um, clues that you like them through here, that, 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 that. It'll slowly start creating a picture, brushstroke by brushstroke. And that aha moment, always comes with a deep sense with, it, with, it, with, it, with strong feelings of appreciation and you might even come to mind in the image of you is like a like a like an anime recall where it's like sprinkly and it's fuzzy and you're like this clearly in the vision you're not giving them psycho eyes first of all you're like more calm and a lot of people end up falling in love with people who do this type of stuff let's keep listening being subtle and allowing people to slowly connect the dots over time is often better because it creates an element of intrigue and anticipation. Instead of explicitly stating their feelings, a person may drop hints, engage in meaningful conversations, or display small acts of kindness. These subtle cues require attentive observation and interpretation. I remember one time there was this girl named Hannah at my college and she had a hot friend, her name was Samantha. And she came over to my room I was so naive and she's like, and I kept talking about Samantha. And and I remember Hannah just like looking down. And I remember she said, well, sometimes people, other people like you and they're staring at you right in the face. 
And because I was so into this um, Samantha girl, I was like, yeah, but man, like, this chick is hot. Like, I, I just, I just want to hook up with her, man. I didn't say that. <laughs> now, that's what she didn't fucking want you, you perv. Now, I was like, that's what, you know, I'm going to, can you hook me up with her? And she was like, all right, I'll see what I could do. And then she left. Right? That, I wasn't, I didn't pay attention to that because I didn't like her that much. Right? But that's the type of stuff that I'm talking about. Subtle hints that makes you say, or she, is she talking about us? As individuals gradually piece together the clues and realize the other person's interest, it deepens the connection and builds a stronger bond. This process demonstrates mutual investment and genuine care, making the eventual realization more significant and heartfelt. Only someone who truly likes you will be able to connect those dots. It requires a genuine interest and attentiveness to recognize the subtle signs and patterns. Someone who is merely told that you like them without going through the process of connecting the dots may not fully appreciate or understand the depth of your feelings. The gradual discovery through observation and deduction creates a stronger emotional impact and allows both individuals to explore their own emotions and navigate the evolving relationship. It, it's better yet to give them a puzzle of this and that, this hint, this hint, this hint, this hint, and let them realize that they like you on their own, right? So, for example, engaging in conversation, talking to them and trying to find things in common, right? Offering gestures, noticing the details. Just say, hey, I noticed that you usually buy this food. Hey, I bought this salt so you could try to put it on your food and see how that tastes because I know you like that. You're like... Thank you. I like that. Thank you. Right? Or even when you look at them, your eyes are more light up. You smile more and they'll notice like, oh, this person is always happy to be around me. Right? Your body language is more open. You're always available for them if they ask you to hang out. Right? Even your eye contact is more, it has more of a look of care rather than fucking the psycho look. Calm the hell down people with that psycho eye contact. Right? But more of like a like a Leonardo painting, like the look of a mother that cares about its son, right? Like the just, just a relaxed face, right? You show them through your body language because body language is interpretive. Body language isn't 100% certain. And also, it, it, there, there's plausible deniability. You could say, no, I don't like you. That's just all in your head, right? Not to fuck with them, but, but the reason why you show them through your body language because body language has a natural mystery about, them, about that, which... It gives us per the person hope, but also makes them doubt. You know what I'm saying? Um, other things is that you remember things about them. You remember the things that they said. Um, remembering the detail. If they look sad, you notice that they're sad and you let them know, hey, I'm, I'm here for you. These are not things that say, hey, let me hop on your dick. These are not things that say, hey, let me let me be a fucking sympazoid. No. These are things that over time, someone will reflect back and say, yo, you know what? That person really appreciated me. Yo, you know what? That person really, really showed that they like me. It's like realizing who loved you and your family years later. You're like, oh my God, my, my aunt really loved me as her child. That's fucking crazy. Like the privilege to have an aunt love you like that, you know, and you, you just realize it and it just chokes you up. You're like, yo, this person really liked me. You know, even when you realize that there was someone in your life that really cared about you, you just didn't notice, it hits you harder. Because when you connect the dots, the connecting of the dots is almost like an aha moment. Like, oh shit, this person likes me. And this is why the connect this is why the connection of the dots and letting them realize it through the subtlety is so another example of subtlety that you could use is learning to now show the full range of your emotions. Learning to show the subtle parts of the emotions. So for example, if you're happy, I always tell you guys about Georgina, right? Where you had Shalia, which was the the the, the main top ma the the director of the program where I worked at, and then you had Georgina, who was a supervisor of all of us, right? But she was below um, Shalia. Well, what happened was I like I tell you guys the whole time I thought Georgina was the boss, the whole time, and the reason why was because you had Shalia who was who showed everything with her face, everything when she was happy you saw it. When she laughed, you saw the full range of her laughter, right? Um, when, when, when she was just like a fucking golden retriever, right? But Georgina was more like a fucking Doberman, right? Where if she laughed, she, she, with, she tried to withhold her laughter as much as possible. But you could sense that she was laughing on the inside, 
right? When she was mad, she wouldn't show her anger, right? She would just show it with like the, the condescending type of Devil Wears Prada look. Like, and that subtleness of condescension of, I cannot believe you did that. Or that subtleness of, okay, I'm happy that you did that, but I'm not going to show it. Made you want to impress her, right? That subtleness made you want to get her to like you more, right? Um, but what it also did is that it, it, it cloaked her with an aura of power, right? Because then it showed that she, first of all, you sensed that there was more going on than what you see in the face, right? You knew that when she laughed and she withheld the laughter, your brain automatically tried to understand that maybe she is she also laughing on the inside? I think she's laughing on the inside. I think I made her laugh. Notice how her not showing the emotion made my mind pay more attention to her and try to understand her. What does that say? It says you're be, you become more mysterious. You're harder to read whenever you don't show the full ranges of your emotions. I'm not saying to be a bunch of walking terminators where you don't have no emotions, no. I'm saying that show your emotions less frequently, but do show it. Why? Because like I always say, the self is always coming through. If you feel happy on the inside and you try to suppress it through your face, your happiness is still going to show. It's just going to be more like a, it's, 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 it's going to be more like a, like it, you, you're, you're radiating happiness from within. And that radiation, rather than the complete expression, gives more, like has more of a, aura of authority as opposed to the uncontrollable expression of your happiness. It, it might come across as weakness. People, don't get mad at me. Don't be looking at me. Don't be looking at me like that. I, didn't, I did not make people, okay? So that's one thing. Showing the subtlety of your emotions. Don't show every all of your emotions. And I don't say don't show your emotions to be cold. I'm saying don't show all of your emotions. Show the tip of your emotions because it always comes it always leads to people respecting you more and it leads to people looking more into your face looking more into your into your mind right so that's one thing the next thing um be subtle with your facial expressions right if somebody's happy like i said if you like if you like this be like if you're mad be like if you're confused, well, it's okay to be to be confused, right? Um, but but just be subtle in your facial expressions. Primarily, and this is very important. Primarily with positive emotions. Be subtle with your positive emotions, but be willing to show negative emotions with your face. Now, don't show outburst, right? I'm saying with your face. With your word, when you speak, keep it constrained. But with your face, you can show it. Why? Powerful people are more willing to show negative emotions than ne than than weaker people, socially. People who have who are lower on the totem pole have a higher likelihood of showing positive emotions to their neighbor, and they're more afraid of confrontation, and so they're more afraid to show the negative emotions, right? So be more subtle with your facial expressions. Now, other ways that you could be subtle is when you pull away, right? Um, like I, we were taught, we were reading Robert Greene's um, in the book club video. We were talking about how when you pull away, Robert Greene was talking about how never pull away. Now, for example, if you're making somebody jealous, never try to make, which I don't recommend, let life do it. Trust me, you're always going to, you're going to make your partner jealous one way or another. Just don't do it. Don't do it consciously. You know, just let it happen. It, it will happen. Just like fights. You don't have to pick a fight. You're going to fight with them eventually. Um, when you, when you pull away and you're, let's just say you're, let's just say you're a guy and you're trying to make your girl jealous, for example, right? Um, and, and you literally put, post a comment and said, damn girl, you're looking hot, right? And you show it to your girl, like, bro, you get, you're getting, you're, 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 you're asking to go, to go to the hospital or you flirt with a girl in front of your girl, right? That's too obvious, too obvious, too 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 obvious everyone can see it too much too much directness too much external obviousness per se makes people defensive and it makes people question you but when you do this in a subtle way it allows people to be less defensive more open and it allows a person's imagination to do the dirty work for you right um 
And again, people, this is, I, I, I got to be very, very clear about this, man. Like, this is, o only do this if you really have good intentions. If you're a psycho motherfucker out there, like, fucking, like, you're the last Terminator type of shit, like, don't, don't tell people you watch my channel. You're going to make a better thing to, to do is this. For example, you follow someone. Follow a girl that's hot. For example, that's just an example, right? You follow them. Now, why would that be subtle? And then you like one of her photos or two of her photos or three of her photos. The only way for for the for for your girl to find out that you followed her is for her to be paying attention. And if somebody likes you, they're going to be paying attention to the little things. When you like someone, your attention is narrowed. You pay attention to more detail. You're able to notice you you know more differences in their face. You start noticing the things that they like and they don't, and don't like. You're more focused on them because you're falling in love with them. So as a result, any subtle changes, you're going to be aware of it like a spider being aware of the movements of its web. You're going to be more aware, more aware of the subtle movements. So even if you try to add a girl on the side, your girl's going to be aware of it. She's going to know you added someone and she's going to know that you commented on it. That type of subtleness, that type of like attention is what you want why because if you notice your girl I mean, i'm not advocating for this I'm, I'm just giving you guys an example for all the cameras out there saying i'm teaching people how to manipulate calm the hell down this is just an example this girl will say oh my god like i noticed that he had 600 followers and today he has 601 follower who's the bitch and then you look down you're like that's a new girl let me click on it and then you notice that poor tyrone liked her photo and then the next photo poor tyrone liked another photo and then maybe you notice that Tyrone hasn't texted you all day. At the same, but coincidentally, he added that girl last night. That's what I'm talking about. You sort of, your pulling aways are almost invisible. Only visible to those who are looking for it, right? Or maybe, for example, you, or maybe when you're with them, today, you're, maybe when you're with them, your energy is 10% less. Maybe when you're with them, you kiss them, right? For example, you know when you kiss someone, but you don't want to kiss them? So the kiss is not real. You know when women say, give me a real kiss, right? That type of stuff. It's more like she's like, lately, he was busy all week, last week. Um, when he saw me, he wasn't dressed too well, but he was there. But even when he kissed me, it wasn't even a real kiss. It was more like a peg, like a like a, like a a kiss. Even, even, when we, even when we did the holy deed... He wasn't even that into it. What's wrong? And then you look at his Instagram and then, you, oh my God, like, who's the bitch? Like, you see what I'm saying? And so that type of pulling away dawns on them. It's not in your face. It's more like, it's almost like something that's subtle and you're almost like trying to hide it, but you're not trying to hide it. You know what I'm saying? So the subtle pulling away where you give them a puzzle for them to, to, to connect the dots is the most powerful form of pulling away. When you love someone, your perception becomes finely attuned to the subtleties of their behavior and emotions. This heightened awareness stems from the deep emotional connection and investment you have in the relationship. Love creates a powerful bond that allows you to understand and anticipate your partner's thoughts and feelings. As a result, you become acutely aware of even the smallest changes in their demeanor or actions. So, you, so what you do with that is you use that to build a connection with both of you, to, to observe and notice if they really love you because only a partner that loves you will notice the small differences. And that's why, you know how they say like, oh, I cheated because my boyfriend, because my husband stopped paying attention to me. If this, if your husband actually loved you, he would have noticed that you were spending less time, your facial expressions looked more bored, your, your, your personal trainer was giving you discounts, and he would have he would have done something to to fix it right and so it's almost like for, from the other part the my expression of my love for you is that i notice those differences is that i notice that today you are slightly down than yesterday you know it's kind of crazy when someone truly loves another they pay attention to the subtle things because their emotions are intricately entwined with the well-being of their partner. 
Any deviation, no matter how slight, can trigger a sense of concern or curiosity. Which, notice, which will lead to the other person chasing to find out what's wrong. This, when they subtly pull away or act differently because their behavior holds meaning and significance to you. In contrast, someone who isn't in love may not be as attuned to these subtle cues. Their emotional investment and connection to the person are less profound, making it easier for them to overlook or dismiss minor changes in behavior. Without the depth of love, the significance of these nuances may go unnoticed or be deemed unimportant. This heightened sensitivity to subtle differences is particularly evident in situations involving infidelity. When someone you love is cheating, you are more likely to detect the smallest signs of change. Your emotional investment and intimate knowledge of your partner make you more perceptive to shifts in their behavior, mood, or availability. Even the most discreet alterations in their routine or interactions can arouse suspicion and prompt further investigation. <laughs> prompt. Someone, Sounds like a woman prompt further investigation. <laughs> but right? Isn't that crazy? That's that's insane. Um, and, and that's why these strategies work symbiotically between a part between two people. Um, you're naturally one day going to get bored of your partner and you don't and you want distance naturally. That's going to make them feel insecure, right? That's going to make them chase. And then like like anything you're gonna like them again regain interest right and, and so it, it undulates you're never fully 100 percent into your partner it, one day you're 90 the next day you're 100 the next day you're 95 the next day you're 80 you're 70 right but the natural undulation if you are honest with yourself and you try to not hurt your partner because you know sometimes you don't want to kiss them or kiss her and your kisses are weak like you, you know, you you give some L kisses, and he's like, "Yo, like your kisses, that's not, that wasn't even a real kiss." And you're like, "Oh, it's, I'm not into it today." Naturally, you wouldn't say that if you like him. You say, "Oh, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a real one." You give him a real one, right? As opposed to you don't feel feel like giving a good kiss, just don't give a good kiss. But now, if you're honest with yourself, he's gonna start saying, "Did I do something wrong?" Even if you say it's not you, it's me. What I'm trying to say is just be honest, right? Sometimes you don't want to cuddle, spend time with the person, say it. If they love you, they're going to pull away, but also it's going to hurt them, which is going to make them try to see maybe, maybe, maybe they're, maybe you need, maybe, maybe they're going to take you out for dinner, right? Maybe they're going to do something for you to cheer you up, right? And they, their effort to try to cheer you up and makes them like you more because you're, they're putting in effort. And that proves to you that they like you which then makes you like them more, right? So I'm trying to help you guys see the non-manipulative aspect of this. It's not just evil, you know? This is something that is natural. And this is why I encourage you, if, if you don't feel like kissing someone, tell them. If you don't feel like being too close to them physically, tell them. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not, they're not gonna hate you for it. They're gonna be offended by it, but they'll like you more because of it. Because it's it seems like it's natural, it seems like it aroused because there's a part there's a part of the person that feels like it they're they're going crazy, which is fucked up. But this is this is what happens when you love someone. When you love someone, you pay attention to unnecessary detail, right? And this even happened to me where I'll pull away because I got work or I got this or that. And women would just start like if I'm seeing a girl, she'll she'll assume things that are not even true. I'm like, what? What do you mean you, you notice me blinking at a 1.5 speed less than usual and that and that I, I spent two hours with you yesterday instead of two hours and 15 minutes like I usually do on average. Like that type of stuff is 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 only somebody who really likes you will do that. And so that's why well, that's what pulling away does. Pulling away will reveal that this person really likes you. And they're pulling away through doing it subtly has a more powerful effect. For example, like I will tell you guys, the Tyrone, like like the Tyrone, the personal trainer thing, right? For example, you, um, the girl tells the guy, oh, you know, I have I have a new personal trainer and he's giving me discounts. He's such a nice guy, right? You're aloof. He's a great guy. And then you change the topic. He's like, what the fuck? A big black guy giving my girl a discount and he's always available, right? And he's a nice guy. The fuck? Like that type of stuff, it's not obvious. It's, it's well, it was kind of obvious, right? But at the same time, the aloofness makes it subtle because they're, she's not aware, but I'm aware, right? But maybe it's just me being insecure. Which one is it? I don't know. That's the point. 
So what happens? So then now I'm going to start thinking about how can I reverse this dynamic? How can I fix this? But it could just be all in your head. This is what happens when you are in love. You start to th see things that are not there. You're more prone to illusions. And so even the subtle pulling away makes anybody go crazy. So then, okay, so that's one thing. Be subtle in your facial, facial expressions when you pull away. And even when you love someone, stop trying to verbally let them know how much you love them. Let them know through, through, your, through the subtle things. Let them know through you giving them a very timely gift. Let them know through you cooking something that they know is special. Let them know through reminding them to charge their phone because do you notice they always forget to charge them at night and so you always complain in the morning that your phone is, is always dead, right? The subtle things. Um, are always leaving the, 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 the umbrella next to the door because you know they always forget the umbrella, right? The subtle showing of love is the best form of love. The subtlety, not I love you, but the little things. Hey, don't put too much salt because Tyrone doesn't like too much salt in his food. And don't forget to put some platanos on the side because he loves it, right? Oh, girl, man, I love the way you make this, man. You make me feel so special sometimes, man. You always have everything ready for me, right? It's a subtle little things. And in fact, people say that when when people die and they've been in, in long this in long term relationships, what they miss the most isn't the extravagant moments. It's the subtle things that happen throughout their relationship. The subtleness, the subtle look, the subtle gift giving, the subtle holding, even the way they hold you. It's more subtle. You, when you don't like someone, you hold them and you, you're, sometimes your hand is just floating on their hands because you're not comfortable with them. But the subtleness is that when you like someone, you grip them like a vice grip, right? And you just hold them like a fucking anaconda. And it's just more there. But it's that difference is subtle. Even when you kiss someone, when you really like someone, the kisses are more penetrating. When you don't like someone, the kiss is not passionate. The kiss is more like, like bouncing, like bouncing a basketball. It's just quick. Right? So let your, let your love show. Show it subtly through the little things. Don't, don't let them cheat and tell them that you love them. No. Just show them through the subtle little things. Um, speak with nonverbal cues as much as as much as with your words. The Godfather is perfect about is perfect with this. The Godfather sometimes rather than calling people, hey, come over here, I need to talk to you. What he does is Give me a second. Right? He has an economy of motions and an economy of words. Any powerful people, any powerful person, you'll notice that this is what they have. They have an economy of motion and an economy of words. And the Godfather is, is a perfect example of that. Um, so that's one thing. Subtlety in your in your non... So learning to speak without your words. For example, I remember um, I used to teach this before to men. Um, and I still teach it today. Um, and no, 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 I used to teach this to women. My fault. And that's, for example... It's learning to respond without words, right? Finding occasions to respond without words. Um, for example, somebody says, hey, Alexis," You don't say, yeah, what's up, man? You just go like that. Or even putting pauses in between responses. Like saying, Alexis, where are you from? I'm from New York City, right? It's not good. Alexis, where are you from? New York City, right? The pauses, the subtlety, right? You, your, your response is a little bit slower, right? So this is actually more of an exercise, actually. Um, just try to think back, think about what, what, you did, what you did yesterday, right? Where were moments when you could have just responded with a nod, with, with, with a look here and there? For example, somebody says, Alexis, are you really, are you really 40 years old? I could just say, come on, man, you, you know the truth. Or I could just say, and they'll be like, come on, seriously, are you really 40? Come on, man, what do you what do you think? Right? And I responded. But the extra pause, looking, speaking with my eyes, speaking with my face, communicating something to you with my face, creates the same effect that Georgina did when you couldn't read her face and you're trying to interpret her. The extra effort, just the extra effort in trying to ask what's in your mind creates the aura of mystery 
and that's the key. If you're a mysterious person, you're automatically more interesting, more attractive, and you have an aura of power around you. Show the subtle versions of your emotions, like I said. Let people read into it. Learning how to have a poker face. So all to all of the Melissas out there, to all the Bob the Builders out there, you got to learn how to not show your, your emo- how to not carry your emotions in your face. Like you got to work on that. You can't be so goddamn expressive. And you learn to not be so expressive through one getting traumatized, <laughs> right? <laughs> Giving up on life. Or two, learning how to have a meditation practice. A meditation practice will give will relax your face. Remember, trauma causes an unconsciousness of your body awareness. So that means that when you're when you're getting traumatized, you'll notice that there's a moment there there's a numbing of your body and a disconnection from the environment. And this numbing also comes with your facial expressions, where you're not aware of the faces that you're putting. It'll lock certain parts of your face so that you don't even notice that you have a consistent expression or you don't even, you don't notice the type of facial expressions that you're putting out into the world because you're so in your head. Meditation will relax your face, relax your nonverbal cues, relax your body. That's, that's what meditation does. And so it'll relax away all of the tension in your face so that you can present a more relaxed demeanor. And it'll help you to to not show your emotions and not ca- and not walk around with your emotions in your on your sleeves, right? And so this is this is the pop. This is why people who are subtle are just so attractive. Um, in fact, people who are subtle um, tend to move up in in life, in my opinion. Like, there's no study behind that, but that's just what I think. It's the subtleties, even when you think of great paintings, the great paintings like Leonardo da Vinci. What made him so good was the subtle things, right? In every form of art, the subtle things is what people appreciate. The subtle little things in a movie that 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 if you're that only real fans can catch. You know what I'm saying? Like the the the, the goose eggs per se. That's how you know something's really good when there's a lot of goose eggs hiding underneath the surface, right? And that's how you do it, people. Um, anyways, if you guys want to learn more about this, just purchase my courses. Um, specifically, my course the charisma blueprint i talk a lot about this subject which is pretty much how to project charisma and my course emotional mastery will teach you how to control your emotions so that then you can control your face and your non and your power language which is, which is the way that you speak right um and the key to that is just watching the course and actually doing it people i'm not black jesus i don't do magic you can't just watch a course and automatically do this. No, it takes practice. You know what I'm saying? You had a lot of years of practicing your new, your old habits. It's going to take a while to reprogram them. But the best way to do that is to develop a meditation practice or go into a 10-day meditation retreat. If it's passing that retreat, you can check out. Okay? Anyways, don't forget, people, 50% off coupon code using the coupon code MINDFUL. Um, if you guys ever want to work with me one-on-one privately without people knowing, you could schedule a one-on-one coaching call if you want something more affordable you could purchase an email question hi some facts so i could post it on youtube and you could get your answer um it's it's what we do with the pillow talk hour you could click on the description down below to purchase a session there too okay take care and i see you guys later